Hi everyone, welcome to Unscripted. I'm Ruby Makuni. And I'm Jen Goldman. And we just uh, decided to get together to talk candidly about business and wellness as it relates especially to the new year. You know, everyone's uh, talking about a new beginning, embracing a new normal, a new change. So we just thought we'll get together and kind of discuss uh, all things business and wellness. And I like how you said that, looking at a new chapter. I will have to say, though, I disagree with the normal part of it. Um, you know, it's been one of my, I'm not sure what the word to use is, but displeasure hearing people say things like going back to normal. Um, you know, the pandemic clearly has gone on far too long, <laughs> um, but I never believe in backwards. Um, so when I hear the word back or the word normal, I think let's go forward and let's be awesome. You know, let's let's put normal you know, back there in the past. We'll leave it back there. Um, so let's let's embrace that new chapter and let's have it be awesome. And I don't want to say abnormal, but above normal, <laughs> above average. Yeah, I agree with you because I think that's, uh, you know, looking back constantly leaves us quite stuck. And uh, and and perhaps, you know, and, and as you said, it's gone on long enough, you know, 2020. Oh. <laughs> it seems like yesterday, but it has been a long time. And I think maybe uh, the way to really uh, look at this new year is to embrace what is and to look at, uh, if, if you're looking back, maybe looking back at the lessons learned over the last few years. Uh, what no longer works uh, or what works now and uh, looking at um, all the lessons that you know with every I always say there's a, a purpose to every pain <laughs> there's a lesson to every tragedy there's a lesson to everything so maybe just looking back and um, taking stock of what's worked what's happened this is a situation how do I now you know um, embrace it take control and now move forward uh, you know like and so yeah what are your thoughts that's on that? much better well I think at the beginning most people me included thought oh this thing is just going to you know be done with and go away and we'll just move on with lives and then it just lingered and it stayed and nobody you know I, I think nobody um least of all me expected you know two years later we're still looking at this thing um and I think a lot of people got stuck in that whole, but it was just supposed to go, you know, come and go quickly. And, you know, we were just going to get back to life. Um, and, you know, when I look at it, it's like, but it'll never be 2019 again. You know, 2020 was what it was, 2021 was what it was. And now we're in 2022 and we still have COVID. It's still here. We're still dealing with it. We're dealing with it differently. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. It's, if you're going to look backward, think about what changed what works, what doesn't work, what, what blessings can you make of it? You know, certainly it's not all good. We lost a lot of people and there's been a lot of trauma and tragedy, but a lot of good things have come from it. And I think as an entrepreneur myself, I love change. Change is one of those things that I embrace all the time. And when there's not enough change around me, I'm looking to make things change. Um, so in some ways, the pandemic brought about so much change that it, it felt almost a little bit of a relief to me. I don't have to create it. It's happening all around me. I just have to figure out what's the good in this situation? What can I take from it? How can I use what we have to move forward and do things differently? Um, so I didn't have to be sort of the impetus of the change, um, just got to let it happen and, and observe and see what new things could come out of it, which, you know, is an exciting time for me. And I think at the beginning, I felt really guilty about it because while everybody was scrambling, trying to figure out, am I essential? Am I allowed to work? Where do I work? How do I work? Um, I was just happy and, and seeing so much change happen and trying to figure out how to grasp it, how to get you know, how to get in it, how to make it, make me different and change my business. And, uh, it, you know, it, it wasn't a happy time for most people. For me, I was a little bit excited. So what were you doing? So what were you, um, I guess what I mean, yeah, what were you doing in pre-2020 that you started doing in 2020? Uh, or what do you not miss you know that you would well, in pre-2020 you know and, and as we're talking you know I realized too that we we did this perfectly because 
you know, you rep your business represents more of the personal side of things and mine represents more of the business side, but they're so interlaced and intermixed. And I think that's what really resonated with me in 2020 when the pandemic started to cause shutdowns and isolation um, is how much I really needed to integrate those two things a little more seamlessly. So for me, it was a really good quiet time because I was working primarily with schools and government um, oh. departments. And so there were several weeks where they didn't know what to do and they weren't operating. Um, and so I used that quiet time to figure out a few things. How can I make my business, I'm gonna say geographically independent um, so that I can do what I do from anywhere and it doesn't need me to be in any specific place. Uh, but also I took that time to really use the quiet and pour more energy and love into myself. And I started seeking therapy and, and doing new things for me. Um, you know, the, I, I think the forties have been transformational for me as a whole. Um, but that period was really about treating myself as well as I treat other people, you know? Um, and I think you probably have grasped that long before I did, um, being a wellness coach, I'm going to say probably not the right title for you. Um, but that really hit home in 2020 is I'm alone. It's a quiet time. Take advantage of it. Yeah, that, that is uh, so true. And I, I know a lot of people found that calmness and that silence and some clarity too, because, you know, with um, silence, sometimes there's clarity. And I think that's what happened to me too. I think at the beginning of uh, 2020, I was really, I, I would say at a crossroads where I, you know, sometimes when you're living conditionally, when you're thinking, okay, when I get to this spot, I'll be happy. When I get to this spot, I'll be happy. Um, but then we always, and also I think um, I, maybe I was holding myself back a little bit, or we all have that dream that we want to do, those uh, little passions that we want to follow. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, we don't take the plunge. And I think in 2020, <laughs> that's when I really decided to, um, to focus on on, on wellness and uh, my business uh, full time. And, um, and I also took time to really reflect on, uh, you know, inner peace, I think, just, uh, you know, I was talking about uh, conditional living and just, uh, you know, at, at some point you get to a stage where you think, gosh, you know, if you're living conditionally, if you're living where you're thinking, um, if I, when I get to the spot, then I'll be happy, then you never really get yeah. to that. I uh, Exactly. And so, and I just, yeah, I really like you, I enjoyed, um, I took that time to, uh, enjoy the quietness, um, do more. Uh, I did a lot of nature walking <laughs> and nice. yeah. And, and I really did a lot of reflection on, on what I wanted to do uh, as far as my life moving forward. Yeah, yeah I get that. I, I think we did the same thing and I know I didn't do a lot of nature walking, but my, you know, my girlfriend, Susan and I, we had a, a lovely park um, in the town that we were both living in and we would meet there every day. I guess you could say she was my COVID buddy. Um, and she and I would walk as a, you know, it's not really a circular track. It's, it's a, a weird, crazy eight, I'm going to say. Um, and you know, we would walk three or four miles on that track, just in circles every day, just chatting. And, you know, we called it, you know, solving all of life's issues um, and, and all the world's problems and that, you know, four miles together. And it was just such a nice time to just have just two people, great conversation. You, you know, it was a park, so we were out in nature um, and just getting exercise and sunshine during that time where you're not going out. Um, you know, you're not being in big groups of people or, you know, necessarily with the coworkers and the people you are used to being with. Um, just that one person in that quiet morning. Um, that was a really good, a good healthy thing that we did for ourselves and, and for each other, because it was a time where, you know, isolationism, was happening um, not because anybody wanted it to, it just was, everybody was quarantining and staying home. And so, you know, for me and I live alone, it was really nice because then it's like, okay, great, another human being. <laughs> Did you declutter? <laughs> Did I declutter? At that point, I didn't. Um, I, at that point I was, actually I was still going to my office every day, but my office was just me. Um, and so I was more focused on 
pouring energy into myself and um, figure out how to make all of my services virtual. And so yeah. that was my real focus. And after that came, okay, now that I figured it out, I can literally be anywhere in the world and do the same work that I do. Um, so then it became not necessarily decluttering, but packing up and moving out. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I just wanted to move. I wanted to change the scenery. I wanted, you know, some different experiences in life. So it did leave me there. Um, you know, one thing I've heard a lot of people saying is that, especially in 2022, is not taking on more than they can handle and being intentional about setting boundaries. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think for the longest time, myself included, I would say yes to a lot of things, maybe out of obligation or out of uh, or just sometimes you just, um, you know, you just feel I can do it all or, or, or for whatever reason. But um, that's one thing I keep hearing a lot of that. I'm setting boundaries this year. I'm paying attention to my personal space, my personal time, which is uh, really great, I think, for stress management and just um, for, uh, you know, just not to feel overwhelmed sometimes, which I know can be easy to do with everything going on at times. Yeah, it, it is. It's so easy. And I don't know if it's more of a female trait. I don't want to sound sexist, <laughs> but we do. We do tend to say yes to a lot and feel pressured to feel obligated uh, to do more and more. And it's it's something I did learn a long time ago. So my business is almost seven years old. Oh, and okay. the first year that I was in business, I worked 24-7. Um, you know, you're chasing dollars and clients and you're doing anything anybody wants you to do or anything anybody's willing to pay you to do. Um, and so I was running my business Monday through Thursday and my company was running a winery Friday through Sunday. And so it was literally seven days a week. Wow. Um, and wow. it was it was incredible. It was fun. It was great learning and growth time. But man, I was exhausted. So after a year, I was like, OK, we're going to be promoting some people in the winery. <laughs> And I will now be a Monday through Friday kind of person. Um, and you do. how did you know you were exhausted? Because for a lot of people, there's that disconnect between actually understanding that, you know what, um, my body needs some attention. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you know you were exhausted? I'm trying to remember physically, because this was, you know, obviously six years ago, but, you know, I didn't have time like doing mundane things like going to the grocery store or cooking mm -hmm. dinner or just normal things. I kept thinking, like, when do people shop? When do people buy Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or have conversations on the phone with their friends and loved ones? I didn't have time for that. And, you know, so it was, it was that point of, I don't remember the physical feeling of the exhaustion, just, I guess, more frustration mm -hmm. of never feeling like I had any time for anything else. You know, my, my laptop was open if I was, you know, if I was anywhere in the world, you know, there was a computer in front of me. I was answering emails and phone calls and text messages at any hour. And I finally thought, I, I just, I had this little nagging voice in my head that said, you didn't start a business to run yourself into the ground. Yeah. Um, and so then I started like, you know, if you need me, need me, text me. Um, because I did, you know, as, as someone who's running a winery is like, well, you know, that's not just gonna be Monday through Friday, nine to five. And there may be some situations that you have to address. Um, but if you need me, text me. Otherwise, I am not going to be paying attention to phone calls and emails after five. Um, and by the way, don't need me. <laughs> you are very capable people. You know, it, it becomes <laughs> empowering others. Like you're a capable human being. That's why I made you an assistant manager here. You you don't need me. Um, and yeah. you know, it, it empowering others is empowering in itself. So that yes. helped me learn to grow. And I do see other people making boundaries now. And I think you're right. And it's taken a while. And I wanted to ask you, what was your experience? Because I know, like I said, I worked with a lot of government officials and school uh, officials and administrators. Um, but just that looking at the community that I was in, I was noticing a lot of people as the governor shut everything down and, and you know, people were working from home or not working at all because they didn't know what to do the really, really big, big wigs um, in, in government and in corporate world were going home yeah. um, where they're used to being an off, in an office and being super important and respected, maybe feared and barking orders. And all of a sudden they were home 24 seven with spouses and children or perhaps by themselves. And I watched some of them 
literally lose it. Um, you know, you could see it in emails you were getting, you could see it on social media. And I was like, wow, these people that look like they commanded such great respect are, are losing it because they're now home um, and they don't have that staff around them and their role feels diminished, I think. Um, and, you know, did you experience a lot of that with people needing your help with, you know, I want to call it wellness in the workplace, but really they took it home. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, workplace or, you know, wellness, work from home wellness programs definitely picked up. I would say I the latter half of 2020 into 2021. Um, one, because of, you know, getting that engagement back with the team, um, helping with stress management, mental well-being, and also working from home is very different you know you don't have that it's easy to sit on the computer for hours you know unless your cat comes in <laughs> <just stress you laughs> he on. looks very distracting <laughs> yeah and you know uh, a lot of meetings too a lot of us you know um virtual meetings and um and just you know that social aspect was lost for a lot of people so there was definitely that interest for okay what can we start doing for our team to stay connected but also the work structure sort of changed as well you know um, a lot of maybe perks that were meant for that were designed for the in office was you know a sort of kind of shift or how do we organize now our our work structure and what have you but also you know it's in in general i think it's uh, probably it, it was a difficult change for a lot of people because you know when you go to your work uh, it, it's nice in general to have your own separation from your from your loved ones as much as you love them <laughs> and it, it's it's nice when you have your own space and your own thing to do but i think because it was so sudden there was no time to really uh, to really adjust for a lot of people. So um, yeah, for, for some people it worked out well, but definitely it, it's, um, we can't diminish the, that a lot of people struggled and are still struggling because it's also, you know, space-wise too, kids, homeschooling, um, sometimes that stress relief of actually going to a new environment is actually very helpful for people. So it really has, I think for the most part now, um, because either you have a hybrid, um, a hybrid structure or now, especially this year, I see there's now the theme of moving forward. How do we now make this work whatever this work is for you and creating that um and i think it's something we have to do at this point you know looking at at it and um you know instead of staying in the center of the storm kind of looking at and saying okay how am i going to clear this path for myself um or else you know there's it, you'll just be stuck in um the unknown i guess <laughs> and i think i think you hit on something there as as people were learning how to adapt to the new environment, I think many of them were looking at it as a temporary fix. Like, let's just figure out how to deal with this for now. For now, yeah. Um, because, you know, then it'll go away and we'll just, you know, like it, go back. Um, and, you know, those temporary fixes as band-aids have become, okay, now we need to look at this more long-term. You know, there's a lot of things. And, you know, like you and I were talking earlier about networking groups. Um, I run two of them. And at some point last year, as the pandemic started to ebb away, it was, okay, do we want to get back to meeting in person? And I, I, maybe one or two people were like, yes, everybody else was, no, this is so much more convenient. Yeah. Our groups grow because anybody can be anywhere and be part of the group. Um, you don't have to get up and drive somewhere. You cut down the amount of time. And it just this is just the way it is now. Like we, we don't want to go back to having, you know, networking groups in person. Um, it's a bigger hassle where this is perfectly fine. And, you know, we'll just do it virtually. And, you know, as the leader of the group, it's like, great. I don't have to go get breakfast. I don't have to make coffee. I don't have to <laughs> get there super no early. Room. <laughs> um, and so while it was the Band-Aid, you know, well, let's just do it this way because this is the only way we can meet. Now it's more intentional. Now, okay, let's start thinking about how this group can grow this way because we're not going back to meeting in person. Um, and maybe different types of groups will interact in person as we move forward. Uh, but for the networking group, it, it just, it works this way. 
we get bigger attendance, we can do more things. Um, we, we're not spending money, like I said, everybody gets their own breakfast and their own coffee. Um, and so, yeah, just thinking about it, as you said, more intentionally, as we move forward, what are those fixes? And, and maybe looking backward and, and figuring out, you know, what are the band-aids we put on some things that need yeah. to be further tweaked and adjusted because now, now let's think intentionally and, you know, forward thinking permanent solutions. Yeah, definitely. And and we I think uh, especially in the wellness um, arena, I definitely see that, you know, in terms of workplaces and in terms of even entrepreneurs as well. I, I know that's your area of expertise, but a lot of people are really looking if there's anything that's come out of these last two years is really looking at how to create um, a life that people uh, with, I, I guess, more peace and I guess more um, calmness mm -hmm. and sort of looking at how, finding enjoyment as well, finding enjoyment in life and not just um, kind of being a zombie through life because anything can it's happen. <laughs> And so uh, I think at least that's what I'm seeing. And I'm, I'm really hopeful for, you know, the discussions out there about how can I take better care of myself? How can I take better care of my family? And how can I create um, harmony where I can still, you know, be productive and reach my career goals, but also being mindful of how I take care of um, not only myself because if you take care of yourself you can you can definitely take care of others in the way that you would want to be taken care of as well so I am definitely seeing that a lot and are you, I hope that you are seeing that with entrepreneurs as well because it's easy to to work 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 <laughs> it is it, it, it's an odd thing I think because we have that work-life balance that we've always struggled with especially you know when we talk about entrepreneurship in most most cases, it's what we call solopreneurship, it's where, you know, true. yes, I'm running a business, but my business is really just me. Yes. Um, and so it, it's, you know, it affects you differently because, you know, you've always struggled with work-life balance um, and working from home and not working from home. And it is, it, it becomes a pour what you need to into yourself as a person, yes. which also helps advance your business. Um, and so, you know, especially, you know, I'm not dealing with staff or, you know, crew or anything like that. It's just me. And if I get better at me, I get better at my business. Um, and, you know, that is one of the biggest takeaways that I've had over the last few years and in, in growing. Um, but I also, you know, I was thinking you and I talked earlier about wrapping things up with a rapid fire question. So I think we should probably wrap this one up and yeah. I'm going to ask you, what is the biggest lesson or the biggest blessing for you that has come out of the pandemic? Um, I think I've definitely developed more self-confidence, I think. Yes, I, I've been working a lot on stuff. And I think the pandemic has given me the opportunity to take those giant leaps. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think for me, if I were to answer that question, it would be inner peace. Um, you know, you hit you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned that earlier, because I was thinking that was exactly what I was thinking to myself at least a year ago of what I wanted more of. Mm. Um, and I was that person who I never worked from home. I always worked from an office. I didn't want to be at home. It's too distracting here. You know, my dishwasher's making funny noises today. I need to go deal with that. And I've got these things and it's distracting to the point where I have a lot of inner peace and I can work at home and I can focus on what I need to focus here. But I can also do some of the other things that bring me joy or that need attention in my house. And it's not a distraction. It's I like integrating my life and my work now and having time for everything and, and still placing boundaries, still knowing when I need to say, you know, enough is enough with this stuff and put it over here. Um, but that inner peace um, and being able to be wherever um, and, and focus on what I need to um, has been a big lesson for me over the last I, I really love that because inner peace and, and that comes too with what I was talking about earlier about that conditional living because if you can find that inner peace then usually if something I mean if we really think about it there's always going to be chaos there was probably there was always chaos pre-2020 and there will probably always be chaos but if you've got that inner peace that inner foundation then um you know it, you don't feel as shaky in a lot of ways but final question for you what do you miss from pre-2020 what do I miss um hmm 
that's a difficult one. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing that I miss really is I was in the midst of a youth entrepreneurship program oh, that I was running yes. in 2019 and early 2020. Um, like I, I call it, it got COVIDed. Um, and so um, I was working. Oh, that's with, an interesting term. <laughs> COVIDed, yeah. Um, I was working with high school students at two different schools at that point. We were running a pilot program and, you know, taking them on field trips and, you know, doing engaging activities with them that, you know, we, we did some things virtually. But it wasn't the same. I miss being same. with yeah. those kids and working with the students and, and talking about what their business hopes and dreams or questions were. Wow. Well, you know, maybe that's a topic for next time, because I wonder if a lot of parents will be interested in hearing that. I know, uh, you know, kids learning is always evolving and I, I, it will be interesting to see if uh, that program, I know if I was uh, nine years old again, I would probably enjoy it. So I don't think uh, I've ever heard a person say that if I were nine. <laughs> So let's go back. <laughs> way back. Way, way back, yeah. And but our yeah, goal... No, uh, sorry? I was just to say, I think our goal should be to have the inner piece of that cat in the background. Oh, just like, I know. It doesn't matter what's I, I happening know. around you. That is the life, right? <laughs> that yeah, is I want to be a cat when I grow up. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you, Jen. This was such a nice conversation with great. you. Really, um, I'm hopeful for the future. You know, sometimes it just kind of zoning out the noise and just focusing on on the good things, the good positive things. I'm so glad that we connected and uh, we can continue to connect and having these um, great discussions. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Looking forward to the next one. Bye.